Talkbox has been around for about three years, and we've been in the video chat business that entire time, uh, delivering it through the web without a download, trying to create a very easy to use experience. Uh, and you know the, the majority of our business has been through a site called talkbox.com, which is what we're using right now to communicate with each other. And our focus has really been on multi-party uh, video communication. So not what we're doing here, which is just person to person, but actually what happens when we get four, five, six, even 20 people on the screen at the same time. Over the last couple of years, one of the things we've noticed is that as people engage with content, the conversations go on for longer. Now, this isn't necessarily a huge surprise if you think about what happens in the enterprise when people use WebEx. You're almost always engaging actually with the PowerPoint, not with the people who are talking. The PowerPoint is the content. The video signals are wrapped around the PowerPoint. In our world where we've been focusing a lot on consumers, we've noticed, for instance, that people will get together to watch YouTube videos. And when they're watching YouTube videos, they'll stay online for 50, 60, 70 minutes, groups of people watching YouTube video after YouTube video engaging with the content. And so one of the things we started to do was to experiment with, well, what other kinds of content are people interested in? And then we had this sudden aha, which was that, you know, hey, the content is, it's not about bringing the content to TalkBox, it's about bringing TalkBox to the content. The web is the entire content. Everything from, from gaming to, to news sites, to healthcare, to education, to, to marketing programs, all of these things are possible places where live video makes sense and creates a more engaging, more immersive, much more personal and human experience. And, and we looked at the patterns that we'd seen um, on our site and we realized that we were onto something. And so what we did was take a lot of the infrastructure that we've built over the last two years and create an entirely new way to access that infrastructure and we call that open talk. And what it is, it's an API that lets website developers and business owners, whatever business they're in, um, it gives them the components they need to actually build this video conferencing capability right into their site, but more importantly to weave it into their site in a way that makes sense for their application so that they get control over each stream, where those streams go, who sees whom, how it relates to the content, all those kinds of things. We've been out in market for about 75 days uh, with OpenTalk now, so it's still really early going, but we've uh, just uh, uh, actually announced that we've had almost 30 sites go live in production um, with OpenTalk, and they really cover an astonishing range um, of, of applications, and, and they go all the way from uh, news sites, uh, to gaming sites, education sites, healthcare sites, uh, marketing programs, all of these things have already launched in the first 30 days. And so when you talk about you know, specific sites, uh, I think some things that are interesting to look at are, are sites like uh, eBuddy, which is actually uh, launching today. Uh, that is an instant messaging site that is able to take an instant message text exchange and instantly escalate it uh, into live video uh, directly in the context of the existing text messaging exchange. I think that's pretty cool. On the other end of the spectrum, um, there's a partner in the gaming space called PokerView, which actually is going to allow you to play poker online where you can actually see the people that you're ta playing against and you can see their streams right next to the cards so that when uh, you know, when the cards change and you can actually see someone's reaction, it's more like playing actual live face-to-face -face poker. Um, you know, we can keep going. Sites like Tutor Trove, which are in the education business, um, sites like Able To and Pretty Padded Room uh, that are actually more on the healthcare side of things. So there's already a large range that we're seeing out there. And then the upload is from a, a standard webcam. Can you upload from mobile devices uh, at this point? Well, I think mobile uh, is obviously a space that's moving extremely quickly. So for us, it's an integral part of our strategy. Uh, today, uh, using Open uh, you can watch an Open Talk conversation uh, on an Android device. It just works. So you know, we actually went out and bought uh, the Samsung Galaxy Tab when it came out, turned it on the first day, and boom, there it was. We were watching Open Talk conversations. Uh, the next step for us there is being able to publish, so acquire the webcam that are in these devices and publish. That will be coming soon. And then for us, the iOS devices, iPad, iPhone, etc., come soon after that. Okay, and tell us about um, you know the business model. So for these clients, what are you offering them, and 
Do they pay? Will they pay? How does that work? Well, one of the things we're trying to do is really make this multi-party video chat an integral part of the web. So deliver these building blocks that any developer can use, whether they're a three-person shop or a Fortune 10 company, uh, to weave this kind of video conversation straight into their site. And so as a part of that, we're making the base offering, what we've put out today, uh, absolutely free. Uh, and, and that allows you know, people up to 20 streams to be displayed on a page at once. That allows thousands of people potentially to watch conversations and allows the developers to put together and assemble those conversations however they like on one page, across many pages, or even across the entire web. What we're going to be doing over time is adding more and more services to that. So the API for us is a living thing. We enhance it literally from week to week. And as, uh, as we add some of those enhancements, what we're going to start doing is introducing premium services uh, that sit on top of the base offering for which we will charge money. Now, there's a whole lot of sites that will just use the baseline offering and won't need the premium services, but some sites will want access to those, and that's where we'll start to monetize. Such as what sort of premium services? Well, when we went out and talked to people and were identifying applications, we really came back with a pretty big list of things that people were interested in uh, and uh, were willing to pay for. And the first one we're going to be rolling out, uh, which you know will be out in the next 90 days, will be the ability to archive open talk sessions which is actually a very interesting capability because it's not just a question of, oh, record this thing that's happening on my computer. It's actually going to archive in the cloud whichever streams you want. So you might have a talk show with three people um, you know, on the talk show panel, but hundreds or thousands of people watching and talking amongst themselves. And you can then just choose to record sort of cast portion of that show and get those three streams, but perhaps not the audience. That's the kind of thing we're going to make available as a premium service. Let's talk about media companies or newspapers. What are the opportunities for publishers to embrace this sort of live platform? Well, I think when you, th when you really think about the web, um, increasingly we live our lives online, right? You go look at the stats, I don't care what it is right now, 56 hours or something, you know, every month we're spending online. And the things that we used to do uh, in the real world socially, we now do online alone. And that's, you know, that's true for shopping. I used to shop with my friends. I now shop online alone. I used to go to movies with friends. I now watch you know, Hulu alone. All of these activities can become social. And face-to-face -face interaction to us is a key part of that becoming social. From the media business uh, in particular, we think there's a tremendous opportunity as you know, stories evolve in real time and as news evolves in real time to engage with the audience in order to be able to let them become a part of it. I mean, think about how Twitter has changed the universe. Just today with Egypt unfolding on a day-to-day -day basis, it's a real-time event. And there are people around the world who would like to talk with that. What would happen if you were a major news organization and not only do you let your um, your readers talk amongst themselves, perhaps with their Facebook friends, perhaps with people they follow on Twitter. Well, what would happen if they also put online live their correspondent from Egypt for 30 minutes a day in order to be able to actually interact with the readers and with perhaps editors back at the show? There's this possibility to continue to transform what media is and, and bridge that gap between editorial and crowdsourced content. And just to be clear on a couple of things, there, there's no advertising in, in this offering, is that correct? At the moment, there's no advertising in this offering. We think over time, um, for some verticals, advertising is a play that may make sense. After all, we're delivering live video streams, so delivering video advertising is something that we could do, but we're not doing that today. And over time, if that's something we do, we'll do it in partnership with uh, the sites that have adopted and implemented us. And does, your, uh, does this uh, embed work on Facebook at this point? Yes, absolutely it does. And some of the first uh, sites that have launched are actually Facebook applications. Uh, and there's, uh, it works. It's basically JavaScript. It works anywhere you can put JavaScript. So Facebook, absolutely. Fantastic. All right, Ian. Well, thanks very much for your time. And uh, we'll look forward to watching the progress. Fantastic. Appreciate it. Thanks. All right. Thank you.